So you guys are guinea pigs. This is going to be my presentation at St. Louis uh, in, the, in the end of July. Um, this, uh, it was pretty difficult to, to put together because we've got, you know, when you build a layout, you've got so many pictures now. Um, and then trying to squeeze everything into, into 40 minutes um, isn't easy. So I've got about 80 slides and I'm going to blaze through these things. And if I go too fast, just let me know. Oh, you got, you got the full 60 minutes tonight. So. <laughs> okay. I'll still try to do 40 because I know that you, you know, there'll probably be some questions and I know you have some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is about uh, a, a layout that I built in my last couple of years that I was living in Germany and it's a, it was a switching layout and I still have it, although I have, uh, I'm in the process of rebuilding it now and I call it a uh, Hermitage Road. Um, and it's, uh, you'll see why it's, um, it's kind of a, a tip of the hat to a lot of uh, what the guys are doing in England, how they'll build like a little Ingle Nook layout or a, a little, uh, just a little standalone switching layout. And they give them names and so forth. And so um, the area that I'm modeling was along Hermitage Road in Richmond, Virginia. And so I just modeled it, I just called it Hermitage Road. And it, it seems to seems to kind of fit. Um, and so, you know, why, why am I building small? Um, building small because we're not settled down yet. I'm renting here in Illinois. I work at Scott Air Force Base and we don't want to, we don't really want to settle down here. Um, so I probably got at least one or two moves left in me. I'm, I'm trying to get as many moves in as Doug did in, in his career. Um, <laughs> uh, still got a couple of moves uh, with the Air Force left. And uh, I built a couple of larger layouts and, and neither of them really survived the last two or three moves that I made in the last 10 years. So, so I thought I want to have a layout, but I want to have something a little smaller. Um, so I built some of you guys may be familiar that I, I built a couple of versions of my Acri Iowa layout and I had to abandon both of them. The first one was in a house that I owned here in a, in a basement and it was about 30 feet long. And then when I moved to Germany, I'm sure I don't cover my face up there, but when I moved to Germany, um, I built that layout to be modular and to be movable, but it was too heavy to move. Um, and the government charges you per the pound to move. And so I just dismantled it and I brought everything to Germany and the plan was to rebuild it when I got to Germany. And I did that. Um, I'll show you pictures of both of those layouts um, and then when I was in Germany, our house sprung a leak. We had a rental house and it sprung a leak and we had to move again. And when uh, when I moved my layout, I had to pick it up, move it in a week and it got all bashed up. Nobody to blame but myself because I moved it. Um, and so I dismantled it and then I started to build uh, the Hermitage Road layout. So uh, here was, here's just like one view of the first Ackley layout that I had. And that was at a house here in Fallon. And it was big. It was bigger than it needed to be. It was just one town. And it was in Model Railroad Planning 2015. I think it was 2015, maybe 14. Um, but it was simply a one town layout. And, and I dismantled this when I moved over to, uh, to work at Ramstein Air Base. And then I moved to a house. Um, about 20 minutes from the air base and it had a big third, third floor room. And so I rebuilt the layout. I don't know how well you can see this, but I rebuilt it as a sit down layout. I'm gonna get my phone. And um, it had staging on each end. I know, but it's and then I, I uh, just simply rebuilt the whole town there. And it, this worked really nice. Um, it was uh, like, 23 feet, and then I had two about 10 foot staging yards, and this was nice, but then I moved across town and it got bashed up by me in a cross town move. Um, and then I built this one, and this was uh, where Hermitage Road was when I moved back to the US from Germany uh, last August. So this is what I'm gonna talk about, the Hermitage Road layout, and uh, now I'm gonna start to accelerate things a little bit. Uh, so the concept for the layout came after I got frustrated by building a couple of big layouts and having to move them and them getting bashed up and so forth. So I thought, 
going to build something smaller, uh, but how big and so forth. And I was sitting at the workbench one day, and my workbench was five by two, and I could reach everything on the workbench. And I thought, you know, a layout about the size of my workbench, about two by five or two by six, where I could sit down in front of it would be really cool. And I could just relax and enjoy it and bang some cars around and so forth. That'd be all right. You know, and that's something that I could pack up and move. Um, and, and I like that idea. Um, that's something I could really wrap my head around. So, so uh, I rebuilt, um, I, I built something new and this is all in Germany and, you know, it's easy. There's lumber there and there's, you know, model railroad stuff and you have anything shipped to you. Um, and the design goal for this was to be done with most of the layout in about six months. And my, the plans for my layout were really influenced by a guy named Chris Navard. He's a British modeler and you see his website is on here. And this guy builds small layouts and they're all about two, uh, one and a half by five by six by seven. He sells a lot of them actually. He's got a great website. It's really, really interesting. Um, but just these are some examples of what he's doing. And these really influenced me on how, you know, I could build a small layout and have it highly detailed and uh, everything sort of within arm's reach. And this one he calls Brew Street. And it's just, it's just a couple of tracks and uh, uh, where you can switch and a place for an engine to go and, and, and a little staging track off off the layout. Uh, this is one example. Uh, this is another example. It's a lot smaller. I think this one is only like one and a half feet. Um, but I really liked this concept where you had everything sort of kind of like it's look, looking like in a fish tank or it's it's all together. He's got cove corners and and a couple of tracks and you know enough enough to run trains for 20 or 30 minutes you know, after work or on the weekends or, or so forth. And big enough to where you can, you know, bring to a train meet other people to enjoy. Another example here, just yeah. work. And I really, I just really like the concept that this guy does. Uh, here's another one, sort of like a one, a one town or a one industry layout, but just, just great work, highly detailed. And I, I kind of liked the concept, so. So I started, uh, I had some space to build the layout and I, and I started thinking about what concept do I want to do, do. And the first thing, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to set any sort of trends here, but this is just like the terminology I use with myself. And the first one I, I used uh, was uh, what I called the factory. And the factory concept was like, I wanted to build a layout five, six, seven feet long by about a foot and a half and it would be all one factory. Um, but, you know, like Clark's example, what Clark did with Allied Mills is a great example. That was probably like two by eight. Um, but one layout, one industry with a lot of different traffic, kind of traffic. Um, and so, you know, Allied Mills is a great example. And here are a couple others that I was that I looked at. I think we all talked about Minneapolis Moline. Um, served by two railroads, uh, a lot of traffic in and out, a lot of different traffic, um, you know, fuel deliveries and tractors in and out and box cars and flat cars and bonds. That's kind of what I was looking for, a, a factory that, that used a lot of different types of cars and so forth. Um, Tony Custer has this in his layout. It's a big bean plant out on the west end of Frankfurt Yard. And I looked at this a little bit. He sent me all kinds of information, box cars and tank cars. So forth. I looked at modeling, modeling a version of, of this. Um, this is an aerial of a factory in St. Louis. I don't really know what the factory is, uh, but it had interchanges and it had lots of different traffic. Um, and uh, it's it's kind of too big for a, for a small layout, but maybe if I could pick a portion of this and model it, I thought it would be good. But it turned out to be really too big to do on a, on a small layout. Um, I don't know if Lonnie Bathurst is on this, but uh, uh, right down the road from where he lives in Litchfield is a town called Hillsboro. And uh, there's a big glass factory down there. I think this ended up being a ball glass factory. Um, 
couldn't find enough information on this, but I thought it would be, a, it's a, just a huge factory out in the middle of the cornfields. And I thought that would be interesting, but yeah. I couldn't find enough info on it. This one was a, was a good candidate. This is in Litchfield where Lonnie lives, right down the street from where he lives. Um, it was a radiator factory. So they built you know, like radiators for your house. And they took coal and they took boxcars and they took guns and they took flats and uh, uh, oil and stuff like that. So all different kinds of freight cars in one little place in a siding off the of New York Central uh, in Litchfield. Um, and I looked at this too. I couldn't really quite make it work. Um, on, on the small layout, but this was, all this is kind of those things that I was talking about, the factory concept, just doing one factory uh, on the layout. Um, here was another thing I looked at. This is a team track yard in Philadelphia on the PRR, the Tri Street yard. But if, you know, you just take a close look at this and you see guns and box cars and reefers and tent cars, and there's a meat reefer down there, I think. And uh, it wouldn't be a stretch to put a whole deal around this. You know, cool place. You do it all in a real small space. The traveling crane, you know, could be used for boxes or flats or something like that. So neat place. Um, just didn't quite scratch the itch, you know. Um, so then, since I couldn't really find a single factory to model, I, I uh, started telling myself maybe I should just build. And again, I'm not trying to set any sort of trends, but, but something like a composite layout. And to me, a composite layout is kind of like, I want to go to an area that I know and sort of pick and choose the factories in the area where I'm actually modeling prototype factories, but I can't, in the space I have, I can't quite do a, like a prototype track plan. So I'm modeling an area without being, um, being faithful to the to the prototype track plane per se, um, and so it's sort of, sort of, sort of a composite layout. You're taking a bunch of different scenic elements and factories and so forth from a certain place and just kind of plopping them on a layout. Um, and the advantage to this is, in my mind, was that you could find industries where you could use boxes and reefers and flats and guns and tank cars of different types and, and maybe covered hoppers and because we all have those cars and I want to use them, even though it's a small layout. So how do you do that without making it look tacky or obvious? Um, so I started playing around with this. Um, and this is, this is the place that I called, I know it sounds kind of dumb, but I called it Area 51. Um, but this is in St. Louis. And uh, it was actually Power Grove, which is uh, a little west of St. Louis. But right in here along the Missouri Pacific, there was a, a big uh, printing plant on the right. And in the middle uh, was a factory. I still don't know what that factory is. And, and sort of on the left of that box was a steel mill. And then another small factory to the left. And then off to the far left in the, in the top left corner was a team track yard. So I, I really, really explored this area a lot and took all kinds of pictures. There were tracks that crossed each other in here. Um, it still didn't quite scratch the itch, but, it, but I really got close. Um, I did a big blog post or two on this, you know, trying to, trying to find a way to make it all work. Um, it was a cool area. That's, so it's a Missouri Pacific main line is on top and then the Frisco is on bottom. And then just off to the right were a couple of uh, passenger stations on the Frisco and Missouri Pacific. So it was, a, it was a really hot area. And, and that, that area that's in the box that I call the area 51, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different types of freight traffic in there. And I, I thought it might work, but I just, just couldn't quite, couldn't quite make it work. Um, here's another one on the Missouri, on the Mississippi, uh, a little area where you had a Missouri Pacific freight house and a couple of factories there up in the top left of the box. And then down on the bottom was a big oil plant of some kind. I don't know if they received or shipped or whatever, um, but lots of different industries in one small little space. And then in the same area, you turn the box, um, this part of this box was all Frisco. And so off to the far left, there was a Frisco freight house and there were team tracks and 
multiple industries of various types and so forth. So I just couldn't quite make all this work either in like a in like a two by seven. Um, but you know, man, I'm looking I'm all looking in all kinds of places and just couldn't find anything that scratched the itch. Uh, so I went back to to my youth when I was you know in college times I. Uh, did a lot of rail sanding up in Richmond, Virginia, and I had all these maps and things, and I went up and I looked at all these maps and uh, found all kinds of, of good stuff uh, along the old Seaboard Airline uh, near Hermitage Road. So this yard is long gone. This was the Seaboard's yard up in Richmond, Virginia. And up where you can see up, and up uh, above the yard, there were a whole bunch of, of little industries and customers on the railroad and so forth. And then off to the right out of the picture, there are a lot of other customers too. The big highway there is Broad Street, but right over to the right off the picture is, is what they call Hermitage Road. And it's a big road today. Back in that day, it wasn't quite that big, but I had all these Sanborn maps and things and I started looking around. Here's another picture of the yard. Um, so right behind the roundhouse basically is, is part of the area that I was modeling. Um, but right, right behind there, there were some cool industries, you know, a cinder block plant, right? That could take boxcars and guns. And uh, there was a, a they took concrete uh, cement deliveries rather. And then that little thing to the left of it is a place, it's, it's got a goofy name. It's Alcatraz uh, Paint and Varnish Company. But, uh, you know, they took boxcars and uh, tank cars and they were shipped out in boxcars. Um, so, you know, right on one track, you've got boxes, you've got tank cars, you've got power hoppers, potentially guns, you know, just right on one track. And I was like, ooh, that's good. You know, so I kept looking around the area and up there uh, in, that, in that block, the Hermitage Coal Company, you know, so a little coal company that took a car or two. And then down below is a Southern Fuel and Oil. And the, the tanks were, uh, the storage tanks were just out of the picture there. But all these little, all these little manufacturers and, and shippers and receivers and so forth. Um, this is a later, a later map, but uh, just uh, a little bit uh, to the Southeast of the yard. Uh, where the seaboard and the RF and P are running together, all these industries that were off the railroad, one of which was a grocery warehouse. And grocery warehouses could take boxes and refrigerator cars. I'm like, hey, that's good too. Um, and just off here, you can see on the right where it says Kermit Roads. So just off the right here, this is actually on the RF and P um, seaboard. Those main lines that you can see are seaboard and RF and P. Uh, but all these tracks that are delivering to lumber dealers and crossing each other and coal dealers and so forth and little factories. And I'm like, man, this is, this is too good. And then it uh, looks like I omitted the slide that's got the, uh, the brewery, but off of the RFMP there on Hermitage Road, there was a brewery too. So, so I was hooked by this point and uh, I started messing around with planning a little layout. Uh, based based on this area, I'm kind of going back to that composite layout thing where I'm just going to pick and choose the tracks, and pick and choose the industries, and try and put them all together into one layout. Um, so now we get to the layout part. Let's see how I'm doing on time. I've been going 20 minutes. Might be able to get this done in 20 25 minutes. Um, so the layout was built in the third floor of a of our rented house there in Ramstein, and uh, Houses in Germany don't have air conditioning. So it was hot up there, but it was, it was good. It was a good place. And I had about 12 feet to the layout. So I figured that I could build a seven and a half foot layout and then had about five feet for staging. Five feet, I don't know if you ever tried to build a staging garden five feet, but it's, it's not a lot. You can't, you can't do very much. Um, so, so I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something different and I'm gonna build like a British style traverse table. That's kind of the thing where you, you pull it in and out like a shelf. And I'll show you that later. I mean, I actually built it and it was hard to build. Let me tell you, that thing 
it took me six months to build a traverse table and make it work. But I'm happy I have it now, but it took a long time to do it. It was hard. I am not a cabinet maker. Uh, so how I planned the track was I just put tape down on the floor. Initially, I put like five by one and a half. And I just started messing around with track plans. You know, how, how can I fit all those industries in there? Um, and the, the layout actually ended up looking a lot like the one on the right, um, where I've got, you know, the cinder block plant is, is out in the far right, in the top right. And then the Alcatraz uh, was on the same track. And the reason I like that goofy Alcatraz varnish company was because um, they had two buildings and the track ran between the buildings. And I just think that's that's kind of a different and cool and different cool kind of thing to do. You have your trains running between, they almost disappear just for a little bit between a couple of buildings. And um, and I like that concept. So I really wanted to keep both of those, both of those industries. So I ended up doing uh, something on the right. This is something I made in PowerPoint. Uh, you can see that there's no runaround on there. The runaround is, is off the layout in the, in the traverse table. And this is kind of how it looked. Um, I, have a, I have a switch back there, but you know, I, can, I can run around the train in the traverse table and, and serve the switch back. So um, we're not modeling Altoona here for you know, a cajon pass or anything. So if I have to run the train off the track for a second and pick it up and, you know, do a 20, 30 minute op session, I, I thought that was perfect. So, so it all kind of worked out. Bench work was real simple. I just built a pine box. Okay. And this was the space. You can see the, the space here on the third floor. I had like a sloped ceiling, which complicated some things. Um, made it, 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 the sloped ceiling almost made it to where I had to do sit down the layout, or else the layout would, would have been in the middle of the room. But I built one by four box, and then on top of it, I put uh, a styrofoam product that German, they called it Styrodur, D-U-R, and um, it's a little bit more brittle and hard than styrofoam. It doesn't sag, and it was perfect, really light. Um, so I put that on top of the bench work. Uh, and then the... Uh, the saw horses are from Ikea and they're adjustable. So I could adjust that based on the height of the chair. And then this picture just shows that I put some four millimeter uh, cork on top of the styrodur. And that's where I, I put the track right on top of that. And then I was able to secure the bench work to the, um, the saw horses and, and it all worked great. It was light, easy to move and so forth. And then after all that was done, I built the rest of the sort of the, the picture frame or on the layout. And the lights are hidden behind that top valence. So I had a couple of LED lights up there. Um, and I have to tell you, you know, living in Germany, half of the stuff in this layout was went to German plugs, and half of the stuff went to American plugs, and I had to have transformers and all kinds of crazy things. And to wire this layout half and half, half of 220, half to 110 was a real pain. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it was good. It, it all worked just fine. I, I, I uh, had it to where I could come in, the, come in the room and just flip one switch and the whole layout would come on and everything would be good. But it, it took a lot of wiring out a lot of actually to, to be able to do it with 220 and 110 together. So that's how the layout looked. And then I started uh, putting out track. So the track was all microengineering, like pretty much what we all use. Um, I did the turnout clinic before a couple months ago. So you know what I did with the turnouts? They were microengineering or, or some, in some cases they were scratch built. And, and then once the track was, was laid and wired up and operating, then I painted it all with what are called testers rubber. And then I went back and because the layout's small, I can go and, and sort of detail paint the track. So then I went down, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but I went tie by tie, and I painted each one like a different shade of gray. Um, and it, it really went pretty fast. It just took a couple of nights to do all of that. But, um, so that's what I did here. So you've seen this all before. This is some of the turnouts that I had built uh, for the formal, for, for the, uh, the layout. 
And here's what the track plan looked like when it was all when it was all put down on the left. And then on the right, I'm starting to build the buildings up um, around around what I've got. And it's it's it looks funny that you've got, you know, that it's so small and you've got that sort of like in a box, but it worked out really nice. Um, here's the track painted after everything was wired up and painted. Um, by the way, I controlled all the switch machines uh, with with uh, all the switches with tortoise machines. I just I'm old school and I just kind of like having switch machine. And I only had four turnouts, so it wasn't a big deal to uh, wire them up and, and do all that. So one of the hand built turnouts on the right or rather on the left. And then after some paint and, and ballast, that's kind of what they looked like. The, uh, the ballast was, um, was dirt that I sifted up on, out of a, a real roundhouse site and uh, sifted it all and made sure it was all the same color and put it down and it worked out really nice. It's quite black, but I wanted, a, I wanted the area to look very heavily industrialized. So lots of cinders um, and so forth. Um, like I said in that previous talk, I used all kinds of stuff from Proto 87 stores. This is code 55 rail, and I used these uh, these little joint bars. They were a pain to put on, and they disappeared once I painted it. So I don't know if I'd ever do that again, but, but I tried it. It was interesting. Um, just a view of the track after it was painted. I tried to. Uh, to paint each tie a little different color. And you'll also see there that I that I cut the webbing. I don't know if you can notice, but I cut the web between each of the ties and I spaced them out a little different. And then I also cut the ends of every one of the ties so that they don't look uniform. Um, and I think if I go back here, you might be able to see. It's kind of hard to see here, but what I was really striving to do was make every tie look different from the and the time next to it, either by length or by color or by, uh, you know, orientation, like I, I'd skew them a little bit, um, just, just to create some contrast, you know, um, make sure I'm going the right way here. But that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to go crazy with it, but, you know, cut the ends off a couple of ties and, and make them all look different. In some cases I had to lay uh, my own track to, to bridge a gap here. So that's where those Proto 87 stores uh, high plates came in handy. They kind of disappear too, but if you paint them like the same color as as your track, you know, then they the, the, those details pop out a little bit. This is something I used before that I didn't, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but I use uh, from this, this is, you probably see this online, KD models. And these were, I think, code 70 uh, joint bars, but they, they fit really nicely into uh, microengineering code 70 track. Um, so I've, I've used these for all my code 70 track. If you're interested, I'll, I'll send you the, the link on that. But if you just go to KB models on, on, on eBay, I think I said Google, on eBay, you'll find these. Um, I talked about this before, just detailing up some of the track slopped a lot of paint on it, but then once you clean the paint off, you know, those things look a little better and then go back with uh, with some rust color or some different colors and try to try to make the turnouts look just a little bit a little bit more realistic. Um, in this case, I simply just put some bolt heads um, like uh, like titchy bolt heads on the outside of the frog. You know, if you don't have any details or anything like that, I, I thought it made it look, look a little bit more prototypical. Um, wiring was real simple. I just had, you know, a track bus and then I connected everything, all, all the stuff from the track to the track bus um, with those suitcase connectors. And, you know, all that took about two hours to do. It went so fast. Um, all the frogs were powered, of course, and they're powered through the tortoise machine. So everything was powered up. Um, okay, so getting back to the industries, I, I showed you a few of the uh, pictures about uh, uh, the uh, Sanborn maps and the industries, but this, 
um, is, is kind of where we, we ended up. Uh, this is my version of the Richmond Block Company. I don't have any pictures, um, but this, this was one of the, um, the, the industries that intrigued me because they took, they took cement in um, and they uh, shipped out in boxcars and they shipped out in trucks, of course, and shipped out in gondolas. Um, so maybe even stock cars I put just to, once again, tweak uh, Doug. But who knows, you know, they might, they might ship out concrete blocks in, in, uh, in, in stock cars if they weren't being used. But this was kind of my version and I made this with uh, little pike stuff blocks and titchy windows. Um, I had made an original version and this, the, the, white, the white stuff there was, was the plaster uh, concrete block. And this was the original version. And the, the plaster block was great, it worked great, but, I, but it needed so much backing to make it, you know, stand up vertically and everything that I just eventually abandoned it and I went back to doing something like this. Um, and so this was the the box, the revised box factory um, under construction. The um, I will I would say that the uh, the, the series, I made those out of the plastic sheet. Okay, so I used a a, a toilet paper ring. And I covered it with tape and then I wrapped it up with that plastic sheet, you know, because it's only like 020. And it worked really good. So so um, um, I kept those and they're they're on the layout here. Downstairs. Hey John. Yes, sir. Um, I've got a photo or two of a ready mix plant here in town that had yeah. styles similar to that, and it also shows. Um, how they unloaded, you've got the unloading screw under the tracks for unloading covered hoppers. I can yeah. send you a, a picture of that if you'd like. I've got that picture and that's what okay. I use. I kind of what I use, because you know I have all your stuff from all oh, the years. All right. You, you sent me all your stuff yeah. over the years and I, I kind of use that for this. Yeah, um, it looks really good. I like it. I, I'll, I'm thinking about making uh, a silo around here, there were grains, grain uh, uh, tanks and silos and elevators that were made yeah. out of uh, 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 a clay block that was fired. So it was shiny on the outside, kind of a bluish maroon color. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the idea. Oh yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, I just said thanks for the idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't believe how easy that was. It, I just I just covered it with double-sided tape and put that plaster stuff around it and bam, it was, it was done. It was so easy. Yeah, so, good. Yeah, I originally stole that idea from you and your pictures, by the way. Oh, well, I was going to send you the picture, but I guess <laughs> no need. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll put it in my in my presentation there in St. Louis and, and give you all the credit about that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay, one more one more picture of this plant, and you know you can see the track there. That was code fifty five where I just painted head painted all the going to the effort of painting all those tides different colors. But I think I think the track turned out okay. Um, this is a goofy Alcatraz paint and varnish company, but you know box cars and tank cars and so forth and. And I liked it because you you kind of run a car through it um, to get so to to get to the concrete block factory you got to run a car through here and I just I don't know I just I just thought that was really cool so so I started messing around and again I don't have any pictures of this place um, so I just started messing around you know looking at the standborn maps and trying to figure out what what the place may have looked like so I sort of freelanced it. And, and I wanted some pipes running over so that the, the cars are all running through things um, between buildings and so forth. And this is kind of what I ended up with. Um, uh, I don't know why I put that picture in there, but, but uh, that, that was a lot of fun to build. And, um, and yeah, so that was, that's just my version of Alcatraz, but I have no idea of what the real name was. No pictures. 
uh, the Hermitage Cult had no idea of, of, of what this place looked like. This was my version. I, I had a, uh, I had a, you know, the Sanborn map just showed a little fenced in area. So I made a little fenced in area and I, I put a garage in there and an office and a, a couple of coal cars and, and, and called it a day. And put that one right in the middle of the layout. So, so I could reach over it to get um, to the stuff that's along, along the backdrop. Um, I got a team track on here too. And this, if this looks like the same picture I just showed, it is. Uh, but I took the uh, took the um, the unloading ramp off of my Ackley layout and I put it right there and I called that the team track so I could you know use any sort of car there pretty much. Um, so uh, so yeah, that, that was my team track. The Southern Fuel and Oil, I haven't built it yet. Um, I had a version here on this side of the layout. And this is this is part of the problem with sort of proto freelancing that you you have you can make options for yourself and constantly move things around. Um, but you know you also second guess yourself. Maybe I should put this over here. Or maybe I should put this over there. So I went back and forth on this. This was one version that I built. Uh, didn't really care for it. Here was another version that I built for it. And again, I'm trying to steal Clark's ideas from all the oil jobbers on his layouts. From Clark's layout, they always seem to look right. And on my layout, I was like, none of these look right. So that's because mine are like the real ones. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> so um yeah, this is part of the problem with proto freelancing. So I just, you know, well you can take a real oil dealer and put it there. Yeah, yeah, I should. Just got to find the right one. Um, have have you seen the, the pictures of Jason's yeah. Oil City at Rochester with all mm -hmm. the oil dealers he has there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can pick one of them or yeah, something like that. I should, yeah. Then just make it match to what I got, you know? Yeah. Um, I built a couple of versions of this grocery warehouse. And again, this is, you know, the, the devil in, in proto freelancing, but I built this building. You rec probably recognize it from a, from a Walther's kit, a reliable warehouse thing, uh, built that. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe I can make something a little bigger. So I built another one and I finished this one. And then <laughs> Clark, I like Clark's laughing. Um, but uh, yeah, and then I built yet another one, you know, because I just couldn't stop and couldn't figure it all out. But um, trying to use the space efficiently, you know, um, this is the one I actually ended up with and, and I like it. It looks good. And, you know, it's interesting, the blocks, the bricks that Walters use on this make it really easy to put um, a, uh, like a grout in there and get your, and get some mortar lines in there. It just makes it look that much better. <clears throat> but this is my grocery warehouse, and this is why I can use refrigerator cars and oil. Let me check my timer. 7.10. Doing good. Okay. So I mentioned earlier that I had uh, virtually no room for staging, so I tried, you know, the most complicated solution and time-consuming solution of building a, a traverse table. Um, I just got a couple of slides here for this. So this is kind of what a traverse table is. You've got an entry point and you've got an exit point on the other side, and then you've got basically a sliding drawer um, uh, where you move it back and forth. You don't need turnouts. The turnouts, you know, the traverse table does, does all the, the switching of tracks for you. Um, and so this thing took forever to build and it took forever to tweak to where, you know, the cars are, are not like going, like the tracks are lined up perfectly. Um, I'm glad I did it, but it took, I'm not a cabinet maker and this thing took a really long time to get, to get down right. Um, but I'm glad I built it. I got, I, I bought like ball bearing hinges and everything to make it as smooth as possible. So it, it really works well, but it, it took a long time. And I didn't find a single plan online on how to build something like this. So I, I 
probably built it, you know, bass backwards from every other Traverse table seen out there in the world. But, but um, I like it. And I don't want to get rid of it, but it, I'm just saying it was it was a labor of love. Um, here's a an under construction photo. So I, I built I, I built it and I tested it and everything, and then I wanted to paint it black like the rest of the layout. And then here's a view of it um, all set up. So I just have an extra track down here on the on the back end for another engine or a car if we need to drop a car for any reason. And then, you know, here's kind of the beauty of it. You can, you can run back and forth. Uh, you can run around trains. It's a little weird running around a train because it's different by turnouts. Um, the engine can be running and you can move the table back and forth. That's so really it's kind of weird when you see the engine is moving and you can pull the table in and out while the engine is moving. It's kind of weird. But, but, uh, but it's really cool and it takes a lot of space. It's a, it's a little over five feet and uh, the tracks can accommodate about six cars and for the size of the layout it really works and it, and it really works nice so um i'm not going to get rid of this thing or dismantle it or anything like that it's it's all atlas track everything's wired it's easy to operate it's, it's so simple um it saves a lot of space i don't have to have saved a lot of money too actually because i didn't have to buy a whole bunch of turnouts um so anyway if you ever feel like you want to build one of these things Ask me, and I'll, I'll I'll tell you what a pain in the butt it was. Other view here, um, but yeah, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. It makes everything really easy. Um, just a couple of pictures on operations. It was this was built to be a seaboard airline layout, but honestly, I built it to be an industrial layout where I can use any sort of engine I want. So, um, you know, I would go upstairs and just run around and bang cars around for 15 minutes before dinner or whatever, or a night before bed, and a lot of fun. And I really enjoyed it. Um, this was actually the first train that I ran on the scenic layout after everything was done. And of course, it all completely derailed. So I, was, I was highly annoyed at that point, but I had to do less tweaking. First train, first derailment, too. So. Um, I think I think this engine works just fine on this layout. Might be you know maybe a place in Des Moines or somewhere like that, in Minneapolis. Um, this is one of my favorite engines. You know this could be anywhere in the Northwest, and it kind of fits kind of fits in, in the layout. Um, also use the layout for you know I like building freight cars and stuff like that. So always taking uh, pictures of the freight cars and things and uh, you know stuff for the blog um so good spot there over the brick road to take to take pictures um and so you know a nice nice place to uh to take some pictures and run trains and have fun and and not you know be a big production where i've got a layout that's it's huge that i can't finish you know because i still got kids at home and you know, work is a killer and, and uh you know get 20 minutes a day, I'd, um, I'd rather be running trains than constantly building stuff. So here's what the layout looked like when I had to move. And uh, the layout got a little bashed up in the move, so I'm rebuilding it right now. Um, took, some of the, took some of the stuff off, took the top off, and, and put down all new track. Um, moved to the US, gosh, August 5th of last year, so I've been here nine months again. And uh, I'm rebuilding the layout now. And the, the original track plan is up on top. And the new track plan is, is on the bottom. So I've sort of um, used the same space, but now I have uh, sort of um, angled everything to get a little bit more room, another track on there um, for, uh, for a couple more uh, industry spots. That track down on the bottom there, um, you can see there's a lot of dummy crossings. I call them dummy crossings and dummy turnouts that lead off the edge of the layout. Um, and the purpose of that is to just kind of make it look like it's this switching area is is part of a larger part of a larger yard area. And uh, and this this track plane actually does have a runaround. Um, 
half of it is on the layout and the other half is off the layout. So that track that goes on the bottom there and sort of curves up to the right, um, I can use as a, uh, as a runaround if I need to. And it just goes uh, to the traverse table that's just off the layout to the right. So, so another one, another reason I wanted to, to build some dummy turnouts because I wanted to have really highly detailed turnouts right there on the edge of the layout you know, for the viewer to see and so forth. Um, because I've only got a couple turnouts in the layout and I wanna, I've, I've got time to, to super detail some track and stuff like that. So that's, that's kind of the concept there. Um, let's see, but actually that, that's, that's the layout. It's small um, and uh, designed to just have a little fun and, and be finished quickly and, Hang some cars around and enjoy it, and uh, you know maybe someday I'll build a bigger layout. Um, but for now, I've got something that I can keep and uh, keep working on and, and enjoy running trains. So that is pretty much it, unless you guys have any questions. Yeah, nice job, John. Thanks for doing that. Uh, I have one question. You mentioned testers rubber. Is that a color or is that a, a product? No, it's a color. Okay. It's, a, it's like a dark, it's a dark brown, but it's kind of a rich brown. And then I just spray it on the track. And then it's, it actually, I think, works good for ties and track, but I, I tend to repaint the ties with a gray color, uh -huh. uh, to get a little weathering. But yeah, it's, it's a color. It's a, I guess, is Tester still around? Mm, I don't know. Can't keep them track. I thought how Tester was going away. How about it was in the block plant. I'm sorry, say again? The windows in the block plant? Yeah. Uh, those are titchy. Um, they're titchy industrial windows and then they have, uh, they have like a the tilt out window in the middle and I really wanted to model that. So and that was a real pain to, to model those tilt out windows, but I like the effect of it. It's just, it's just a little different. Very nice, John. Yeah. A beautiful Thanks. model, I'm, too. I'm still following you. I'm about 10 years behind you with small. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I don't feel like doing any more modeling or I tear some up and redo it again. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling you will soon. How did you do the, uh, the dark uh, ground cover? Uh, looked like cinder like ballast again. Yeah, I, uh, so I went out to a, 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 a roundhouse site. It was actually in Richmond, uh, Indiana, mm -hmm. uh, where there was a roundhouse a PRR. And I just uh, dug up a bunch of dirt and cinders. And, you know, you could, you know, you walk around the site and it's all black. And, <laughs> and the cinders and the soot and the dirt. And I just dug up a couple of pails of it. And I put it in the car and I came home and I literally turned myself black, uh, sifting it. <laughs> but, you know, in the end, you come up with a, with a really nice um, sort of almost dirt-like material. That, yeah. uh, I, I think it really <laughs> worked good. <laughs> yeah, it really worked well. So, you know, any roundhouse site where there's plenty of cinders and, and soot and dirt still there, you know, would work. You know, I, I used some real cinders one time. Then I found out that there is a little bit of magnetism to real cinders. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, true. So before I put any of that down, I went through it with a magnet. And then <clears throat> I also baked it just because I've, I've heard that you should bake stuff to make sure that there's no critters or eggs. Yep. In it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. Mama hated me because I was always making off with her cookie pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, anyway, that's what I'm doing, and that's what occupies my time in the basement. Great. Very nice. Love it. Well, uh, any more questions, guys, or anybody want to volunteer for next week? Um. I can do one. I'm doing something real similar for uh, uh, Thousand Lakes NMRA thing on Saturday. 
Okay. And I could I could do that next week if you want. Yeah, that sounds great. What's the topic? Uh, good question. I have to look <laughs> at the title. Uh, it's it's basically um, winging you know, prototype. What's that? It's winging prototype. Winging. You, the word is winging. winging. <laughs> oh yeah, winging. I put that in the. In the yes, you did. It's winging. Yeah, the it's it's how to, it's how to do what John did. How to keep things real, but how to make them so they're real looking. Let's yeah. put it that okay. way. Okay. That right. Sounds great. Yeah. Like what John did. John did a beautiful job of making things look real. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Great. Uh, that sounds good. You're on and. Uh, John, great job, and um, I'm relieved now to be able to tell people where the recording is as soon as I uh, <laughs> get out there, so it'll be good, and uh, uh, thanks again, thanks everybody for showing, and uh, we'll see you next week. See you guys. All right, good night. Bye. Thank good night. you.